Two months in, and this journey we're in had some rough patches. The good news is that I have a plan that I will see it through for the month of March. I'm Mega Man NG, and I welcome you to my monthly update for March 2022. It's a four step plan, I tell you, and this update will consist of four chapters. Why only four? Simple. I'm running late. And I'm also recording and rendering Legends Arceus. Spoilers, it's coming back because I really want to get back into it and finish it. So let's get this show on the road, shall we? The month of February was just as intense as it was last month in January. For starters, we did do more Legends Arceus and finish Luminous Avenger X2. Not only that, but with King of Fighters 15 on the horizon, I took it upon myself to cover the entire series, from 94 all the way to 14. The only exceptions were 11 and 12. If I had a PS2, 11 would be covered, but I don't have one. Also, 12 sucks, and I heard that the game nearly killed SNK. You can thank Matt Mint Muscle's video about it. I'll post it link in the description. To replace those two, I added 98 Ultimate Match and 2002 Unlimited Match. Aside from that, and the fact that I'll have to get the Steam version of KOF 13, everything went pretty well. I even covered all the teams in KOF 15. Now I wait for when the DLC drops, and that probably won't be for a while. If anyone's asking in regards to Luminous Avenger X2 Hard Mode, forget it. What I will be doing is the DLC boss battles that give you special stuff to use on normal mode, not hard. Hey, people already did hard mode and showed the ending. The game's not a joke on hard. It will test you and even break you. So yeah, hard pass. March is going to be focused on four things. Count them, four. What you see here is what you get. Let's detail them down, shall we? First is Pokemon Legends Arceus. Yes, I'm finally deciding to go back to it. With the announcement of Pokemon Generation 9, aka Scarlet and Violet, it's high time I get my butt off the, my rear and finally finish this. That really sounded lousy, I apologize. Not just the main game, but the post game as well. I'm in for hell as they say. I promise I will get it done. All I ask is for your patience, that's all there is to it. Plus a game like this is enough to keep me busy for a while, especially when you want to complete the Pokedex to get your hands on God itself, Arceus. Sheesh. Second is The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I promised an IRL friend that I would do this, and there's no excuse. None. I wanted to do it on the Nintendo Wii U, but then recently Nintendo updated Switch Online for N64, and it fixed many of the issues it originally had. So yes, now I have a good excuse. Don't get me wrong, I do plan on getting the Wii U Virtual Console ports, but it never hurts to get it out of the way. Though if I had a 3DS with a capture card installed, I would do the 3D version. I sadly don't because my old 3DS I had since launch has retired. It's a price I'm willing to pay. Too bad I don't make that much money nowadays. If I did, I would put some of it towards another 3DS with a capture board installed. I'm not kidding, I would make sure of that. Third is Ty, the Tasmanian Tiger 2, Bush Rescue HD. Remember when I did the first game as my first Patreon-sponsored playthrough? Well, Diamond Tier user Dr. Dark 7 shoutouts to him, has now requested me to do the sequel. I've been putting it off for too long and there's no excuse now. Seriously, I am sorry. The fact that I'm so pushed towards having this year of retro that I completely forgot about it. But no more. Trust me, no more excuses. Once either Legends Arceus or Ocarina of Time are finished, I will start this. Dr. Dark 7, I apologize if I didn't make good on my word. This time, I will start it and see it through to the end. And like Ty 1 HD, I'm going to 100% it. It won't be pretty, I tell you. Last but not least is the Final Fantasy Pixel Remastered, but it shows Terra's face. Why is that? Well, you guys know that I've already covered five of the six games in this series, and we're focusing on the final one, Final Fantasy VI. Oh, and if anyone asks, product provided by Square Enix, in case you're wondering. Yeah, they sent me a code for it. If only they can do the same for Project Triangle Strategy. Ah, oh, well. So yeah, it'll be a boss run, and I'll, and I'll, I'll take the time to get it done because 
I have to go through the entire game. This means a lot of grinding, too. Because FF6, yes, there's plenty to grind, especially when you want to make sure that everyone has magic. It's going to be a bumpy ride. But I hope that with this, it'll be enough. So that's what you guys will be getting, or what you guys will know, come for the month of March. If any changes happen, you guys will be the first to know via community tab. So be on the lookout for it. So yeah, you guys know that plans have a tendency to change when they least expect it. It's also reason enough why I have to adjust to them. Let me list you a few examples, shall we? First, remember that video I did when I talked about Nintendo shutting down the 3DS and Wii U eShop in 2023? Well, I decided that I'll be putting my own money into the eShop. The reason for that is obvious, so I can get what I need and be done with it. There are a few 3DS games I want to get my hands on, including the rest of the Fire Emblem Awakening DLC. But in terms of the Wii U, there are a lot of virtual console games I want to get, especially on GBA, DS, and Wii. I'm not kidding. Have you seen the prices that they're going now on eBay for certain games? To prove my point, I will be putting $100 a month on it, every month unless otherwise. If you want an example of what I want to get, I'll be listing it in the description. And no, there will not be a fundraiser for it because I have reasons, and I'll explain why. Speaking of which, I'm sharing this screenshot because who thought it was a good idea for anyone to purchase a loose copy of a 3DS game at a ridiculous price? Case in point, Yokai Watch Blasters. Each loose copy is like at $250. What the hell? Seriously. I plan on getting them digitally. But this really is why I am an avid supporter of game preservation. The fact that Nintendo decides to do this on a whim and the fact that they said in their own words that there are no plans on providing people other means to play this is absolutely screwed up. I guess pirated, I mean pirating is justified. Really, if I could just make a real talk about it, but if you haven't seen my video, you should. I'll post the link in the description. And like I said, I'm not planning on doing a fundraiser for it because what's the point? It's not like anyone wants to help out with it. Speaking of that, the Save the PS Legacy Fundraiser V2 has stalled bad. Not helped with that some dipstick decided to call my fundraiser a scam. I should stop talking about it, but point is, I realized that I'm going to have to do this on my own. I'm honestly okay with that. At the end of the day, the only person that can do this is, well, me. I tried to get help, and despite getting some needed assistance, shoutouts to them, which I'm thankful for, it's not enough. So yeah, to all who have watched and spread the word about this and my other video, thank you. I mean that. Let's shift focus on the next topic, upcoming reviews. Dino Fury Season 2 is now on Netflix, but split into like episodic chunks. Thing is, I'm in no rush to review them, but I will be working on the reviews over the weekend. Not to mention, I'll be working on a review for the failed Nickelodeon pilot, Constant Pain. Why is that? Well, one reason is that I hope to provide my thoughts on it as well as detail how Nickelodeon, the network, has fallen so hard. The other is in relation to the real talk that I'll be talking about right now. Speaking of which... It's time for real talk, and boy, I have a lot to say about it because it's been eating away at me for some time. Why? Simple. My real talk is on a new deal for animation. The thing is, I've grown up watching cartoons and in turn made me have a great appreciation for animated programming. Not only that, but recently I have been arting a lot of tweets on Twitter by people within the animation industry. Why? Because many of them are expressing their desire for a new deal. A new deal for animation, as it were. Many tell their stories on how working within the industry is a pain and at times a struggle. Believe me. I've read many of their stories, including one where an animator almost got blacklisted due to some BS politics. The show in question was Motor City, a series that Disney had done dirty by. I'm reminded of how Micah Ian Wright, a former animation writer, was blacklisted for wanting to unionize animators. Nickelodeon didn't like that, as it would cause their business model to not be sustainable. So they fired him? and even went as far as to have him blacklisted from the industry by getting in touch with other studios telling them not to work with him. Another example was C.H. Greenblatt, responsible for many shows such as Chowder, Harvey Beaks, and Jellystone. He almost got blacklisted because he called Nickelodeon out over the poor treatment of Harvey Beaks. 
he was forced to apologize when in truth, he really shouldn't. He was within his right to do so because he was someone that cared for the show that he created. The problem was Nickelodeon and their executives at the time, more specifically their former president, Simon Garhani, or is it Zargami? It doesn't matter. That wench of a woman should have never been president. In my opinion, Greenblatt should take back his apology, despite not only the network that treated his show badly, but also to the executive that forced him to do this. It would be the ultimate revenge, and also karma, since Nickelodeon has fallen so hard, when even your biggest cash cow, SpongeBob SquarePants, is being mistreated by the very network that exploited it, I mean, sorry, that exploited it for endless profits and reruns, you know that something is wrong. I can go on and on, but I recommend that you check out Twitter and show your support to the many animators responsible for this and many other shows. Use these three hashtags, New Deal for Animation, Equal Pay for Equal Paint, and Storycraft Unite. And I added the hashtags too for good measure. Tell the people responsible for many of these animated shows how much you appreciate their contributions and their dedication. They deserve not only better pay, but also better treatment and most especially, respect. Networks and streaming services such as, as... Let me repeat that. Networks and streaming services such as Nickelodeon and Netflix don't give a damn about animators. They care more for profits and are more than happy to throw, to throw them under the bus if it means they can make more money off a show they worked on. Just recently, Twitter user Crimson Mayhem made this tweet here, and oh my god, this made me shocked. Seeing that our ratio Netflix itself clearly tells you that everything within the animated industry needs to change. Kudos to you, my friend. Kudos. All of this right here is why I'm doing the review of the failed pilot, Constant Pain. Not only will I provide my thoughts on it, but also let everyone know that we should show our support for a new deal for animation. That, and I really wish that Micah Ian Wright can join in on the fight, along with C.H. Greenblatt and anyone else who is treated poorly by Nickelodeon or any studio for that matter. Be sure to follow me on Twitter because I will be RTing a lot in relation to this. That, and I'm about to hit 400 followers, so that's at least something. The animation industry needs to change. Animators deserve better, and studios need to stop treating them like they're cattle. This fight is not an easy one, but it's one that we must win. So I ask to the people watching this, are you with us? And that's it. Sorry if this is long, and I'm even more sorry that this is late. I'm trying my damnness to get this update up, and I'll be damned if I can't even get it on time in the future. I'm always just paranoid sometimes, but at the end of the day, what can you do? Yeah, I crashed and I couldn't even get any work done today, so I just took a day off. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit that like button. It means a lot to me. Also, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click that bell. I can't stress it enough. If you want to support the channel, you can either hit that join button to be a channel member, or you can support me on Patreon. It's not mandatory, but it's always appreciated. So yeah, I'm done. This is Mega Man NG signing off. Peace out.